tonight's class is about taking the stress out of everyday meals, three simple solutions. Um, when I was up in Utah visiting my family, I have a daughter and a sister who both work full time and um, long hours, and they were really struggling with getting meals on the table. And last week when I was getting ready for this class, I also was working and looking at the clock at five o'clock and realizing that, oh no, it's time for dinner and I don't have anything out. Um, so tonight we are gonna talk about solutions for that and how maybe if you follow some of these three simple ideas, your meal time will not be so doldrummy and fearing and dreading, but will be something you actually look forward to doing because it's not something that you're all stressed out about. Okay, so I want you to become a mealtime master. And to do that, we're going to do three simple things. We're going to um, learn the secret of stress-free meals. We are going to learn how to transform the way you cook and eat. And we're, you're going to learn two great ways to cut your kitchen time in half. Now that sounds pretty miraculous, right? But we are gonna do it. And I know that you can do it too. All right, so the first part, the secret to stress-free meals. Shh, it's a secret, don't tell anyone. Meal planning. Okay, now I know that doesn't sound very exciting. But it truly is the secret to making your life stress-free. If you have a plan and you have bought things to go along with that plan, then pulling a dinner together is not so stressful. And I don't really care how you do that. We're gonna give you some steps though. Okay, so seven easy steps to meal planning. Number one, you need to look at your life. You need to know everybody has a different kind of life and every night or day you may have some things that keep you busier. You may know nights that you're gonna work late. You may have nights that you have to take children to practices. You might have a meeting that you know that you're gonna to have to go to. So um, you might know that there's weather coming and for instance, the, chill, the stew that you ate tonight, well we had a couple storms ago and it was, I knew it was gonna be really cold and rainy and I love to have soups and stuff. I made that for the first time and I loved it so now we've had it like four times. But um, taking into account weather, if you have a chance to do that, then that's a good thing too. Obviously you probably don't wanna have like soups in the summertime, so you know, things like that. Weather does get taken into account. You also, and this is a very key thing that a lot of us forget to do, check your freezer and your pantry to see what you already have. Because lots of times things just get pushed farther and farther to the back, and by the time you get to them, they're you know white with freezer burn, tape, you can't recognize them, you don't know what they were to begin with. And so it's a really good idea. Lots of times you can find the basis for like two weeks of meals just in your freezer that have just been left over from previous shopping trips. So start with that. Um, you also, if especially if money is tight and you really are watching your pennies, also take into consideration what's on sale for the next week. Because looking through sale ads and finding the things that were on sale and cheapest, you can build your meals around. That's how I used to do my meal planning when my children were young and we didn't have any money, is whatever was on sale is what we were eating. If you have some extra money and they have some really, really great deals, then do some stocking up, but only get enough to that you know that you're gonna be using in the next month or two, so it doesn't get pushed to the back of your freezer also. Um, so you all in, oops, that didn't work right. All in your packets, you got a blank calendar. And um, so when you're taking your blank calendar, you have one at home that you're gonna do in. I decided, for me at least, working instead of by, um, by calendar days, in other words, by starting at the first of the month and working didn't work as well for me as just doing it um, a Sunday through Monday plan. And so that's how I do it. So when you have looked at all of these, you're gonna incorporate them into places on your, in your menu. So that's what you're starting with. If you have like one night a week that you know is crazy, that whole month 
if you're planning for a month at a time, you're gonna know you want really quick, easy, fast meals to go for that night, or maybe you have a night that you need to go out, or maybe you have family pizza night. Whatever your nights are, fill in your calendar with those first, and then you're gonna fill in the rest. Um, when you start doing this kind of plan, you're going to be saving time and money Number one, because you're not going to be going to the grocery stores as often. Number two, when you do go to the grocery store, you have a plan. So you know exactly what you need to buy. So you're not going to be needing to buy a bunch of other stuff. And then when you open your refrigerator and you see some cheese in there, you know, oh, that cheese is for grilled cheese. And it's also for cheese enchiladas. It already has a place and a plan, something for that item to do. Yes? You know, we've been doing this. Uh, we have five people in our family, uh -huh. and, and uh, each each one fills out for seven for one whole week menu. Great That's idea. That's what we've been using. So every week, so once every five weeks, we go to the menu. So she was, I don't know if you heard her, but she said she has five people in her family, and they do menu planning, and everybody gets a week to plan for. So that's how they share the load. Um, in your handouts that you're going to be getting, you're going to have a lot of tips and how to fill in your calendars. Because frankly, when I first started filling out, when I did my first calendar, it's a little overwhelming, especially if you're planning for a month at a time, to think, what am I going to put on all these meals? So there's all these different options. You can do things like, um, um, you know, like easy days. Sundays for us are always fancier dinner, so those are always some kind of fancier favorite family dinner. Um, we also have theme meals. We do a lot of Mexican at my house. There's usually Mexican at least once a week. So one day will be Mexican food. We'll have pasta. You might have meat night. You might have sandwich night. Just depends on where, what your family, you know, likes and loves and wants to have as part of your plan. All right. You also want to think ahead because you want to be looking at what is coming up on your calendar to be making for dinner. So you might need to take something out of the freezer the night before to be able to plan for that. And if you don't, and it gets to be five o'clock and you haven't done that, then you have to go to a plan B. Um, plan B can, you know, I think in a minute we're going to talk about, but um, plan B, you always want to have some plan B things built in. I always have some simple things that our family eats. When my kids were home, quesadillas was one of them. We always had stuff for quesadillas at the house because that's something we could put together really fast and the kids could do it. And so if it was a quick night or they missed dinner, they could put, to, put together a quesadilla or something. So you want to have some meal plans that are already strategized into your plan to have some extra quick things to fill in because let's face it, everything does not always go as planned. And so, you know, just because you have a menu and it's like Tuesday's supposed to be spaghetti and you're in the meal, in the mood to have the Swiss enchiladas that are the next week, then just flip flop them and just cross them out as you go so you know what you still have left. All right. So your first challenge for the night is to make a meal plan. Fill it out. You can do breakfast, lunches, and dinners. You can just do dinners. It just depends on what your family eating habits are. I don't care if you do it for a week or two weeks or three weeks or a whole month. Figure out how to do a meal plan, fill out your calendars, and start working on that so that you can start um, being a meal master. All right. The next thing you're going to want to do, step two, transform the way you cook and eat. This also seems like a pretty daunting task. Like, what am I going to be able to tell you that's actually going to transform how you cook and eat? That's a pretty bold statement, even for me. <laughs> so, number one, it is not about spiralizing. I thought about putting some other meal plans that are up there right now, but it's not, that is not, it's going to transform your meal time. It is going to be freezer meals. And I know. You're probably thinking, she's kidding me. That does not sound great to me. To me, growing up, freezer meals were TV dinners. And they didn't have a lot of taste. They didn't really fill you up. They didn't have a lot of variety when I was growing up. There's a lot more variety now. In fact, I'm doing sort of an Atkins diet right now, so I have some of those um, just for quick meals for me. But there are a lot of things. So you can do you, you can do a combination. Pretty much everything we're going to talk about that you can use as part of your freezer meals, 
can be done in combination. It never probably should be one or the other. You probably don't want to have all just store-bought freezer food, and you might not want to have all homemade freezer food. So having a combination of that is really good. Um, freezer meals are now a lot, lot better tasting, and when you make them yourself, they're even better tasting than if you're buying them, and they have a lot less stuff in them. So, I mean, you know, stuff that's not good for you kind of stuff. Um, you... They are very easy to make and they're very easy to customize, especially if you have special diet needs in your family. So making your own freezer meals is a great way to, to be able to customize for what you want. If you want your taquitos that you had tonight to be extra spicy, then put spicier chilies in them. If you've got ones that don't like chili at all, take the chilies out. So you have a lot of room when you're customizing to be able to do it how you want. Um, Freezer foods are super easy to store, and they will store for one to three months. I can tell you I just ate some lasagna that's been in my freezer for a year. It was in a container like this, and it tasted like I just made it. So they will store longer if your freezer's, you know, stored really good, but they don't recommend that. And once again, if you're storing longer than three months, your freezer is going to start looking a little overgrown and stuff is going to get lost in it. Um, you can fit, even if you just have a refrigerator freezer, you don't have an extra freezer, you can fit a 30-day meal supply for dinners in your freezer. And it won't even take up all the freezer space. So it just depends on the kind of meals that you're doing and how you're storing them. Um, you will save money and you will, we talked about only buying what you need. You don't have to be buying a bunch of other stuff. Oh gee, I don't know what to, what am I gonna make this week? And you wander around the store and you throw a bunch of stuff in that you never use. Um, you can also shop sales and you can buy with bulk. Some of the plans for freezer meals are adding, actually putting together a whole bunch of meals at the same time. And so if a bunch of them have chicken, you can buy bigger bulk chicken that's, you know, on sale. I just happened to buy Zacon chicken last week. I got my 40 pounds of chicken thighs in and I canned a bunch of them. And in fact, the chicken in your taquitos tonight for, was my Zacon chicken that I canned. So you can use it a lot of different ways. Um, it will reduce your mealtime stress if you have some freezer meals in your freezer as part, in fact, I'm going to suggest as part of your meal planning that you include freezer meals once or twice a week in that because they are things that are quick and easy. And I was thinking tonight as I was, um, or I was thinking when I was putting the taquitos together that it is so easy when you're putting meals for one night aside, doing it to do it for two nights and then you just freeze that one. And so now you've got two different meals and I can use that other meal later in the month or I can pull taquitos, the tito, taquitos actually were frozen individually, were flash frozen. And so I just put them all in a bag and I could just pull out what I needed when I needed them. I could just, you know, throw them in and cook them in a few minutes and I only need to do a few at a time. Um, another great thing about having freezer meals is having meals to share. And we're going to have a little example of that in a minute. And it is a great addition to your 90-day supply, in, in other words, your everyday food storage. I am a huge believer in a 90-day supply being things that you're already eating, not things that you're just going to stick on a shelf and forget about. So freezer meals totally work into that and is part of that, which is why we're having the class on it tonight. Okay, so there are lots of choices when you're doing freezer meals. You can do a whole lasagna and freeze a whole lasagna. You just make, make sure it's wrapped good so it stays airtight. Because I only have a few people at my house, freezing a whole lasagna, unless I'm doing it for a party that's coming up, isn't really that advantageous. But what I can do is make a whole lasagna, eat, we eat like maybe this much of it, and then cut up the rest into servings. I usually cut them up into this size so it's like for two servings and then freeze that. And now I've got dinner for two that's frozen lasagna. And really lasagna tastes a lot better once it's cooked and reheated. So it's a win-win. Um, you also, one of the saving things about, or one of the fast things, the super easy for freezer meals is just freezing the part that takes the longest. For most meals that include meat, it's the meat that usually takes the longest to cook. So if you cook a whole bunch in bulk of, of chicken, for instance, that you can use for five different meals, 
You've now got the chicken all cooked and packaged and you package it so it'll make a meal for whatever your family size is. And now you can just thaw that and use that and it's already cooked and you've cut out one step to make your meal time faster. So you don't necessarily have to freeze a whole meal, you can freeze parts of it. Um, this is something that I have done before where I've taken um, a, a meal that I want to make but I don't want it all in a bag like this. I don't want it in a bag like this all mixed up. So this is actually some chicken breast. They're making fajitas and they just got their um, onions and peppers on top of it and they're going to freeze it. And so when they go to cook it, they can actually separate it out because they're not going to stick together. And they, and if you didn't want it to stick together even less, you could um, flash freeze. Do you know what flash freezing is? So flash freezing is taking like a cookie sheet um, I've even just put them flat on there, but you can put like wax paper or something down, aluminum foil or something down, put whatever you're going to freeze on it, separate it, freeze it for like a half an hour, and then when you take it out, it won't stick together when you put it in a bag. So, you know, Costco does that. They fresh freeze, their, they do some of their, their um, chicken breasts and chicken thighs are flash frozen like that. But you can do it with berries, you can do it with all kinds of things, pancakes, all kinds of stuff. Um, so this is another way you do it where you make pretty much most of the makings for a meal and put it in. You can even separate them out into different baggies and then just put it in one big bag if you wanted to do that all together. So it's all in a bag. And I did that for a meal that usually takes me about an hour to get all put together. I made, I made one for dinner and then packaged one up and I came home from being out of town and it took me literally 15 minutes to get dinner on the table instead of the hour because all the prep work was already done. So you know, doing prep work for two meals is not that much longer, doesn't take that much more time than prepping for one. All right, and if you have a menu, you know what's coming up so you know what you can prep for. Um, you can do this assembly style where you just do a bunch of different meals that you're planning to do and these cute little things, these are called, I thought these are called, bag holders or something fancy like that. They have actually little things on the bottom so they hold up, they go up and down so you make different sizes and it just holds your bag so you fill them, makes it a lot easier. It's a, one of the cool tools. And you also can do, there's two different kinds of parties that I read about, about freezer parties. One of them, you just get a bunch of people together and you all do this, you all make meals in a bag and you all you know take them home, you make a bunch of them and then you take them home. The other one, you actually, each person makes one kind of something, like one person does lasagna, one person does, I don't know, whatever else. And then you get together, you bring them all frozen in a cooler, and then you just trade them all out. And so when you go home with however many people are in your group, six to eight, say, um, different meals that you're going home for your family, that's two freezer meals a week, and you've only had to do one thing. So um, I, in your packet that you're getting, there's, um, besides the fact that I'm giving you a bunch of lists and information and hints of how to do things, I also am giving you a whole page of um, links to websites that I found that were really helpful. So I broke them down by instant meal, pot meals, and crock pots, and freezer meals, and so you'll get, you can go white right to them. They are experts. Some of them have been doing it for 10 years, and so they know all the tricks. All right, so next. Oh, oh, one other thing I was thinking about when I made the taquitos because I made a huge mess in my kitchen. Another cool thing about doing prepping, um, prepping meals like that in advance, more than one, is that you're only making the mess once, which is great, right? I mean, it's so nice to be able to have that great lasagna and not have the, all the different kinds of pans and cutting utensils that go with that. Okay, so your challenge for the freezer meal to transform your freezer from a land of lost into a land of wonderland. Now, you'll see in here, this is a freezer meal kind of freezer. Um, she's got, just down here on the bottom, each of these bags is a meal. So she's got probably 30 days worth of meals just in her freezer. Um, some hints that you're gonna learn is like, if you're doing enchiladas, for instance, don't put the sauce on. Freeze the enchiladas. You can even flash freeze them separately, so you can pull out one enchilada at a time, or you can do a whole pan. 
but put the sauce on before, right before you put it in. You can make the sauce and freeze it, just keep it separate, because they'll get soggy if you um, put the sauce on. So that was a little tip. All right, so let's now talk about cutting your kitchen time in half or more. This is another thing for me. Um, I made pot roast the other night, and to me, pot roast fits into this category in that because it's really, pot roast is a really easy meal to put together. It's a piece of meat, I season it, I put some onions and carrots and some kind of potatoes with it, put some sauce or something on it, close it all up and put it in the oven for three or four hours. Now I've got three or four hours where the oven is doing the work for me and I'm getting to go work on this class, which is what I did this week. Uh, so, but what are you gonna do? I, and I am a big, I love when I can do two for the price of one. So my meal can be cooking and I can be doing laundry and I can be gardening and I can be doing other things. So I'm getting, I'm getting two things for the price of one. I feel like it's like two jobs at the same time. So these things make your life a lot easier. So this is a crock pot and this is an Instapot. I referred to the Instapot kind of pots before, so we're going to talk a little bit more about them. So let's talk about crock pots. Crock pots have been around a long time. This is one, I believe I heard it from my mother or got when I was first married. It's so old that the thing doesn't come out, so you know it's really fun to try to wash because you have to like wash the whole thing. Um, it's so old that it only like has low and high. There's no anything else on there like fancy like they do now. I have a fancier one also, but not as fancy as the new ones. So let's talk about what some of the things that crock pots now have. Um, they are, first of all, really easy to use. A lot of people are very intimidated by the Instapots because they have a lot of buttons. And to tell you the truth, they are a little complicated. And the instruction manuals that come with these, not the greatest in the world. But that's where going on to some of these websites and, um, and even, oh, where have you been pinning? Pinterest, sorry, I forgot what it's called. Um, Pinterest boards also have tons of this stuff. You can just go on to Pinterest and put in crock pots or put in instant meals or put in freezer meals and you will have thousands of ideas of what to do with yours. Um, some, there is a Facebook page well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but that's for the Instapots. Okay, so they're easy to, easy to use, very few buttons. They're not scary, in other words. They do the cooking and the stirring for you. You really don't have to do much stirring when things are in a crock pot because they're cooking so nice and slow and evenly. They, the newer ones, once they're done cooking, they will keep your food warm. So you can put your food on in the morning before you go to work or when you're getting up and going to be doing things during the day. Set it for a certain time and it will just keep you home, warm until you get home. Safe to eat, which I love that idea. Um, they range from about $20 to over $100. The over $100 is this one down here. It's actually programmable with your phone. If you forget to turn it on, you can turn it on from your phone. Um, you can change the settings, you can do whatever you want. So this is um, super interesting to me. I don't really forget to turn it on, but I think it's a really cool idea. And how would you even remember it if you turn it on? I don't know how it works. Like, does it tell you that it's on or off on? I don't know. But it's an interesting idea. Both of these are programmable in that you can set them to come on at a certain time and set them to be on for a certain length of time at a certain heat and both of them will then automatically go to warm mode after that point. So those are really great. This one up here is not a whole lot better than mine, except it's only $20, and it holds a lot more than mine does, and this comes out, which is very awesome, um, but it still only has high, it has a um, low, high, and a, no, it has a warm. But you have to, it's manual, so it's not automatically going to go to warm once it's done cooking. Well, you can't even set it for a time, you just, you just turn it on and off. So, in my opinion, this is a really great one. This one even has a, I forgot what they call it. Thermometer. Yeah, it's like a thermometer, but it's, you put it in your meat, yeah, it's a probe. That you can put in your meat or your food and it will, I don't know if it automatically turns it to warm once it gets to a certain temperature, if it just lets you know what the temperature of that food is in there, but it's a pretty cool thing, and I want to learn more about it. Um, some other cool things that they have with, at least with, oops, at least with this one, 
is that the lid latches on. So if you're needing to bring it to church, you don't have to worry about it, the lid coming off and stuff falling over in your car, which is another cool thing, yes? Um, I was just wondering, the, the pre-programmed one, how long is it safe to leave for you in the car before approaching it? That is a very good question. I actually, um, so she asked how long it's safe to leave food in a crock pot, you know, because if it's not going to come on for four hours and now it's sitting there not refrigerated. Um, I don't think it would be that long. I would think only an hour probably that you could do that. Chicken, I don't even know if I would do that unless you're putting it in and partially frozen. So if you're putting it in partially frozen and we're talk, we're, in a minute we're going to be talking about how to, how to combine freezer meals with cooking with these. And so if they're partially frozen, it could get away with longer. But I don't know. Somebody else asked some, I watched this um, video that I gave you a link for that's comparing the two. And that was a question that she was asked. She didn't know the answer. She said they're told that you can do that. But she's like, you can program them for up to 10 hours ahead. She's like, who would leave your food in there for 10 hours? So, yeah, you can program them. I probably wouldn't do it that far in advance, but it is nice that you can program it for how hot you want it and how long you want it, and then it will go to warm, So, and then it will stay in a safe temperature for you. Um, they range in size from a, pi from a pint. That's basically like for a dip. <laughs> um, for a pint, up to six quarts. So they can, they're pretty big size. They now have liners for them. And have you seen the liner? Have you all seen liners for them? So the old liners didn't really fit that good, and they could you kind of you pull them up and pull them over the sides. The new ones have kind of like elastic around the top, so they don't slip, which I think is way cool. And with the liners, you could actually mix your meals that we're talking about mixing freezer meal stuff ahead of time right into your crock pot bag and freeze it, and then put it right into your crock pot which is another cool thing. You actually can do that with Instapot too, but it's a little bit different. Um, if you freeze your meals flat in, you know how in the picture we saw of the freezer, if you freeze them flat, they not only will um, defrost faster, but they'll take up tons less room in your freezer so you can fit a lot more in your freezer. Um, when you are cooking in a crock pot, you may not put frozen stuff in there because it takes too long for it to get up to the temperature that was safe. So um, you have to, if you've made freezer meals that are in bags for your crock pot, put them in the, this is why the planning ahead part's important, put them in your fridge the night before, they will partially thaw enough, as long as it's a little bit pliable, you're good, you can put them in there and you're good to go. You also, when they're flat like that, Putting them in a sink with some cool water will thaw them really quickly. You can do them in your microwave too, but I don't really like to do it in my plastic bags. So um, let's see what else. If you start it in the morning, it can cook slow and keep warm. You can cook anything in a crock pot, even bread. So once again, Pinterest is a great place for all kinds of ideas for stuff like that. I do have some cookbooks, but there, there's so much on the internet now for free. I'm just like, use the internet. Um, okay, so multi-cooker benefits. So I call this whole little genre multi-cooker. Now, multi-cookers include Instapots. Instapot is actually a brand, not the whole group of them. They, but all of them are electric pressure cookers. Some people get a little freaked out with them because it has the word pressure cooker in it. But it's not like your mother or grandmother's pressure cooker. It is new and has all kinds of safety valves on it. Mine locks into place and then I can unlock it and take it off. So it has pressure valves, just like a regular pressure cooker. You can make all different kinds of stuff in it. We're going to learn a little bit about that right now. Okay. So I gave you the two kinds here. This is um, this is mine or sort of like mine, it's not exactly like mine. This is what it looks like up close. I wanted you to be able to see kind of what the buttons look like. You can see if you are used to a crock pot with like basically three or four buttons, when you see this, it gets a little overwhelming. Like, like it has buttons for meat and soup. Well, what if you're doing a meat soup? Or what if you're doing, you know, something with only a little bit of meat and mostly vegetables or something? Like, how do you do that? So it's a little confusing. And that's why hooking into some of the Facebook and online things where the people have been doing them for a long time is really helpful. In fact, when I was making my stew tonight, the stew recipe I'm using is actually a crock pot recipe. 
and I wasn't quite sure how long I should be cooking it, and so I went online and looked up Instant Pot cooking in, um, in here, and actually I ended up cooking in an extra 15 minutes because I, I thought the meat wasn't quite tender enough. So you have to kind of play with it like anything else. It's a new toy, and sometimes it just takes a little practice, you know, to figure out how it's going to work for your recipes. So benefits or things that a multi-cooker has. They're really easy to, well, they're easy to use, but there is a learning curve with them. Like I said, the instruction books, not that great. So, in fact, every, that's like a big complaint from everybody that they're just not good. But lean on what everybody else is talking about and learn from the, learn from the masters that are out there. You don't need to reinvent the wheel with those. Um, and if you don't do that, then you're going to get frustrated because you don't really know what you're doing. And it does come with a cookbook, but it doesn't necessarily have stuff in it that you want to make. So the beauty about these is you can take your own family meals and use them in crock pots or instant pots. So let's talk about that. Instant pots, unlike crock pots, crock pots only have one section. Instant pots have like, I don't know, at least seven. So they can, you can cook beans in them, you can cook rice in them, they're a rice cooker. You can cook other kinds of grain in them, you can cook oatmeal in them. You can use them as a pressure cooker. You can use them as a slow cooker. You can use fresh or frozen. You can put frozen stuff in your frozen. The coolest thing about what I love about this is it sautés. So I sautéed my um, stewie right in here in two batches. It just gets hot enough that you can do that, and then it's you know great. So I don't have to do it in another pan and then transfer it. I like that a lot. Um, let's see, I headed everything right. So it does a lot of different kinds of things, which is another reason it's a little bit more confusing because it's not just a one, one function kind of cooker. It can do most meals in under an hour using the pressure cooker method, which is great. You can pressure cook in mine on low and high. I'm not sure with the Instapot if it's the same because they don't have the same high low button, so I'm not really sure with theirs. Do you have high low? She says the low is just for rice. So, okay, she has an instant pot. That's why she came tonight, just to learn. Okay, so, they're not dangerous. The food in them tastes really good, better than what you get in a crock pot, although there are some things I really love in a crock pot because I love the slow cooking part. Um, I have heard some of the reviews that the slow cookers in these are not, don't get as warm as this, so it's more like a slow cooker on low when they're using the slow cooker part of here. What I have been doing um, several times is I have actually started it out pressure cooking and then turned it down to slow cooking to, um, when I did my stew the first time, that's how I did it. I pressure cooked my meat and then I added all the vegetables in and then I learned how to just do it all at once. So that's why finding a website helps. Yeah. And you don't have, you don't see that? Do you have an Instapot? No. See, I'm wondering. So I'm wondering, because the ladies that I was listening to, they said, we've tried all of them, we really like the Instapots. I think they sell the Instapots, and that's why they really like them, but I don't really know that for sure, so I'm not going to say for sure. Instapot. But, huh? Huh? It's not a good crock pot, but... Yeah, that's what, that's what she's saying, but she doesn't have an Instapot, and neither do I, and so maybe our crock pot parts work better than the Instapots. So I use my crock pot, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you don't have to. Um, Let's see, so this, in here you can pretty much cook almost anything. And it cooks really fast. It cooks rice in three minutes with the pressure cooker. But that does, so it is, because of the pressure cooker, it has to get up to pressure, and that does take a few minutes, so, you know. They don't count that in the three minutes, but I'm telling you. Okay, so this is your challenge. I want you to, uh, how, do any of you not own a crock pot or an instant pot kind of thing. You don't own either one? Wow, okay, so you can invest in a $20 one, <laughs> or whatever you want to use. Um, the instant pots really, they, oh, I didn't talk about how much instant pots were, but instant pots run around $100, and you can get them at Target, and Walmart has them, and Amazon, and you can get them pretty much anywhere now. Okay. So, your challenge is to make or cook one meal a week in either your crock pot or your freezer pot. And you can combine that with freezer stuff. Now, I didn't tell you about some of the freezer things.
So let me just go back really quick and tell you about that. When you're going to be doing freezer meals, make sure it's like anything else. It's like starting to paint your house and not having like the paint cleaner to clean up. You need, it's just a lot more frustrating if you start a project and don't have all the things that you need. So some of the things that are helpful when you're freezer cooking are freezer bags. I really like better the ones that have the little zippers on them because I know for sure that they're closed and a lot of them, I think all of them, they are wider at the bottom so they stand up a little better than the regular ones. But I have them in quart size and um, gallon size because I, I do freeze different sizes of things. And so I like both those. I have my little stands now, which I didn't have before, that I talked to somebody night who has them and loves them. Um, you can actually use canning jars are great for freezing. They're freezer proof. They also can go in the oven, but not when they're frozen because they'll probably crack. Um, um, something else that's great is having some freezer tape so it will stay on. I mean, freezer labels. And they come in different kinds. They have ones that wash off just with water. They have some that are washable that just stay on all the time and you can use the permanent marker and erase it off. And they have some that are dissolvable that will just, did I say that one? Or dissolvable. So these ones are just regular ones. And some of the ones, I think some of the pictures you saw had big labels. I didn't find any of those anywhere. I think Amazon may have them, but I gave up hunting for them. But they had big labels and I liked those because they wrote like, um, like when it's, basically it's due date, that's saying that wrong, but like three months ahead of whatever you make it, they put the date so you know when to pull it out. Um, they put what it was that was in it, they put if there was anything else you needed to add to it, what you needed to add, and how to do the cookie with it. So ever, all, the, all the information was right on the bag, which is great. When you are doing freezer cooking, make sure you should write on the bags before you freeze because when, or before you put the food in because it makes it so the pens don't work very good on the bags if you wait and do it afterwards. Um, I went on to Amazon and found a whole bunch of cool containers for really cheap. These, all the containers, these, this one and this one. This one you can get in either, um, this is a one, it's all one. You can get it cut in half and you can get it like a little mini TV dinner with three different compartments. They're super, super cheap. Like 25 of them is $13. And they're microwavable and they're dishwasher safe and they're freezer safe. So they're great for wanting to start to put together some freezer meals. And because they, they're all stackable, they don't take up very much space when they're all, you know, all stacked in together. Um, you can use the more expensive kind of gladware or whatever they're called. They're great for freezer stuff too. It just ties up a lot of my gladware stuff when it's all in the freezer. Um, so bags are good. You can also use um, the kind of aluminum ones at Sam's Club. They have them with lids that work really good for the freezer. In fact, the people on the website say that they are the best lids that they found is the ones carried at Sam's Club. But you also can get them off of Amazon too. The secret to good freezer meals is making sure that you wrap them good so the air doesn't get into them so that they don't get freezer burn. You also, this is all on your tips pages. You also want to make sure whatever you're going to put in the freezer, you put in your fridge so it gets nice and cold before you put it in your freezer and there's a lot less chance of ice crystals when you do it that way. So I was thinking about how do I keep track of what's in my freezer, right? And you really sort of keep, need to keep an inventory so you know what's in there. So you don't end up having that big, what did I call it, the, the lost juggle or whatever. <laughs> um, so this person, I really like their system. So I don't know if you can de decipher it, but I'm going to explain it to you. So she has red socks. She had two large ones and three small ones. So when she uses it, she just crosses it out. So these are probably quarts and these are pints. Isn't that great? So just a little circle system that she just crosses off as she uses it. Um, we found these little uh, pencil pen holders that have um, sticky tape on the back that you can stick right on your fridge or holder pen or pencil so that you can just have it right there and have your list taped right up on your fridge. My aunt said that's what she does. She keeps a, just a list, a written list you know, lasagna, two servings or whatever, when she takes it out, she crosses it out. So when you go to your freezer, if you have that, when you're doing your menu planning, you've already got what's in your freezer. I mean, you don't have to limit it just to the meals. You could also include, you know, whatever kind of meat or whatever else that you have in there. 
So I'm planning on doing that. And I've seen it done on a clipboard too and just, you know, hang it next to the freezer so that you've got it. Um, I can't tell what that is. Oh, that's a lasagna. Is that a lasagna? Okay, oh, this one's a great idea. Okay, so they took their lasagna and put it in a pan that was lined with foil and made it and then flash froze it. And then they took it out and they peeled the, they took it out of the pan and took the lasagna out. And notice this is smaller, it's a square one, so it will fit in a gallon sized freezer bag. And they just slipped it into the freezer bag and stored it in that instead of storing it in a pan. And then when they go to cook it, they just take it out and put it back in their pan to cook it. So it takes up less space. It doesn't, it, it keeps your pans all freed up. It's a really easy way to do it. Some people just fold up their aluminum foil around it and freeze it that way. I don't really like doing that. Um, this person actually, she wrapped hers in plastic and then wrapped it back up in aluminum foil. Aluminum foil is a really good insulator from freezer burn. That's why a lot of people use it. If you're not using a really good container with a good lid that's going to keep freezer burn out, it's uh, a good idea to double bag your stuff in Ziplocs or to do some kind of um, aluminum foil with it. Oh, there's the other picture. Um, okay, this is the sauce, and I, I already told you about the labels, but this is how the label is. So she has the name of it, she has when the, like, the expiration date, basically, it's not really an expiration date, you know, it's a use by date, best by date, there you go. This is what she, what, this, I think this is, she has what's in it, and then this is how to cook it. So, it's just a great idea to have it on there, instead of having to pull out your recipe book if you can't remember off the top of your head how to cook it. Um, these are the taquitos I did tonight. I flash froze them, and um, I, they have cream cheese in them. I don't know if you recognize that when you're eating them. It was an interesting thing to me, but I really liked them. I, she has you um, flash freeze them and then bake them. I personally didn't like baking them. They did not get crunchy enough to, for me. You can do them with corn or flour tortillas. I really liked doing the little mini corn tortillas because it's like a great size. Perfect for parties and stuff. And we cut them in half for you, so that was, you know, a little bit bigger. Um, this is, I told you about the gift idea about giving something. This is somebody who just had a baby, and they took over lasagna, a frozen lasagna, so they could use anytime they wanted with the instructions. Put a, oops, put a loaf of French bread on top of it and wrapped it with a cute little ribbon. Isn't that a great idea for something that you can just have and be ready to give for somebody that needs it? I know there's lots of times that I have friends or hear people, neighbors that need, that I know are going through a rough time and could really use something and I don't have anything on hand. So this is something I'm planning to do so that I can just at a moment's notice, I can cook it for them ahead of time or I can just take it to them, frozen, it and they can use it whenever they want. Um, so we talk about this. Pinterest, great place for ideas for all of these. Um, Google, another great place. You can just Google the websites, although Pinterest will take you to the websites. Especially when you find the top, the top people in them, they almost all go to the same websites. Um, another cool thing about some of these websites, especially the freezer website, was that they have a lot of different kind of diets. They have paleo diets and something, I forgot what it's called, like whole food something diets and, and vegan diets and all kinds of things that are done for um, freezer meals and cooking in crock pots and instant pots. So a lot of ideas out there depending on what your needs are. Oh, I'm over time, sorry. Okay, feeling overwhelmed? Help is on the way, you can do this. So I did a ton of handouts this time. I summarized a bunch of stuff I found on all of those best websites. You'll be getting those, you got a little taste of them tonight. Um, you'll be getting website links, recipe links, cool tool links, where to get all this stuff. Um, the class video, video will be emailed to you or it will be in stores if not that. Okay, to close up, follow these three simple steps. Meal planning, transform the way you cook and eat, and crock pot and instant pots. Using those as part of your everyday food storage. And if you do that, it will take the stress out of your everyday meals and you will become a mealtime master. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you.